It's Tuesday, June 1. This is the news on PBCJ. I'm Simone Absalom Gale. The National Hurricane Center has forecast a more active than normal season with 13 to 20 named storms, 6 to 10 hurricanes, and 3 to 5 major hurricanes. Of note is that the first named storm, Anna, formed on May 22, 10 days ahead of the season's June 1 start. On June 1, Prime Minister Andrew Holness launched a national hurricane preparedness campaign. It is designed to help communities inland and along the coastline prepare for the dangers hurricanes can bring and minimize the economic impacts. The 2021 Atlantic hurricane season is predicted to, predicted to be more active than normal. Third, active seasons do not guarantee direct impact to Jamaica or any other specific territory, but one direct hit in a year of low activity could be devastating. Also, Jamaica's last direct hit occurred in 2012. The island remains vulnerable, however, to tropical cyclone strikes, so preparation is essential. We are in a state of readiness, we are almost 100% are ready in terms of our shelters. There are 867 shelters island-wide, and we have done assessment on almost 90% of shelters across the island. The question has been raised about isolation in regards to COVID-19. All our shelters are equipped with isolation areas so that persons, if uh, they come down with COVID, will be relocated to these shelters. This is our second hurricane season in the midst of a pandemic. Indeed, these, as I said before, are trying times. The restrictions imposed by COVID-19 will alter our emergency and recovery responses. However, we are not daunted. We are focused on strategically putting in place what we need to safeguard our faster and stronger recovery. As the globe continues to grapple with the COVID-19 pandemic, world leaders are being urged to support a pandemic preparedness treaty. The call comes from WHO Director General Dr. Tedros Cabrasis. He is also calling for a major vaccination drive to have at least 30% of the global population be vaccinated by the end of the year. The Director General was addressing the close of the World Health Organization's annual week-long high-level assembly on Monday. The WHO boss says countries should aim to have 10% of world population inoculated by September and 30% by the end of the year. The key to this happening, he says, is increased production of vaccines and medical supplies. Our spring to September goal means we must vaccinate at least 250 million more people in low and middle income countries, including all health workers and the most at-risk groups are the first priority. If countries immediately share doses with COVAX, and if manufacturers prioritize COVAX, we can reach this target and save a lot of lives. Dr. Gabesias says more countries should support the COVID Technology Access Pool, CTAP, to ensure increased production and equitable distribution of these supplies. CTAP draws on the experience of the medicines patent pool and provides a single platform where innovators of COVID-19 health products can voluntarily share knowledge and technologies with quality assured manufacturers. He says CTAP is based on proven methods. Voluntary non-exclusive licenses issued through the medicines patent pool have saved lives by scaling up manufacturing for treatments against HIV, TB, and other diseases. We welcome the interest expressed by several diagnostic manufacturers who are already in advanced discussions with CTAP to share their technology, and also from research institutions who are willing to share their knowledge through CTAP. 
The WHO Director General says an international pandemic preparedness treaty will be discussed in a special session of WHO members in November. He cautioned colleagues that it would be a monumental error to think the danger of COVID-19 has passed. Time now for a look at the latest COVID-19 clinical summary from the Ministry of Health and Wellness. In the COVID-19 clinical summary for Monday, May 31, 37 new cases and one death was reported. To date, 949 persons have died from the virus, with an 86-year-old woman from Hanover, the latest victim. Overall, the island's tally is now at 48,594, with 21,784 active cases. The parish breakdown is as follows. Westmoreland has seven cases. Clarendon and Kingston and St. Andrew had five each, with St. Anne and Hanover recording four. Portland and St. Catherine reported three cases each, while Manchester and Trelawney both recorded two. St. James and St. Mary chimed in with one case each, while St. Elizabeth and St. Thomas reported none. Over the last 24 hours, 187 recoveries were also reported. That leads to an accumulated 25,485 recoveries. And at this time, there are 163 persons hospitalized, with 45 patients showing moderate symptoms, while 10 are said to be critical. Melvin Pennant, BBCJ News. Today, June 1, is the start of the National Environmental Awareness Week. The National Solid Waste Management Authority, NSWMA, will host a webinar on recycling as part of its relative activities. The webinar, slated for June 2, will be streamed on the NSWMA's Facebook page, and stakeholders and members of the public are being encouraged to tune in and participate in the event. In a push to facilitate online or remote learning, to date, the government has donated 124,000 tablets to the education sector. Prime Minister Andrew Honus gave an update during a recent speaking engagement. The government of Jamaica would have supplied approximately 124,000 tablets to the education system. We are targeting approximately 500,000 learners in the education system. Uh, the total number of learners in the education system is approximately 590,000. Of that number, approximately 52,000 are tertiary students and approximately 32,000 or 33,000 are private are enrolled in private or independent schools. So the core target of the Ministry of Education would be about 503,000 students that we want to ensure that they have tablets. Mr. Holness said the government has pursued various initiatives to allow students to own devices. And we have put in place various modalities to do this. We have been supplying tablets to students who are registered on the PATH program. Government has procured 40,000 tablets to assist. We have been providing tablets and other devices through other means, including a public-private partnership called the Own Your Own Device and the One Laptop, One Tablet Per Child program. The Ministry of Labour and Social Security's St. Thomas Parish Office has been temporarily relocated to the Anglican Church Hall at 6 South Street, Marant Bay, effective Tuesday, June 1, 2021. The ministry in a release notes this is to facilitate renovation works at the current office. The ministry apologizes for any inconvenience caused. We keep you abreast with the latest financial market updates in this quick business report with Gabriel Thompson. In Monday's trading session, the JSE combined index advanced by 32 points to close at over 422,000 units. Overall market activity resulted from trading in 97 stocks, of which 38 advanced, 50 declined, and 9 traded firm. The junior market index declined by 4 points to close at over 3,000 units. 
Stocks Advanced for 138 Students Living Jamaica Limited, AMG Packaging and Paper Company Limited, and Caribbean Assurance Brokers Limited. Stocks declined for 1834 Investments Limited, Barita Investments Limited, and Blue Power Group Limited. Trading firm where Access Financial Services Limited, CAC 2009.5% Preference Shares, and Caribbean Cream Limited. Sterling Investments Limited was the volume leader with 11.5 million units, followed by Future Energy Source Company Limited Ordinary Shares with 7.5 million units and Sajikor Group Jamaica Limited with 2.8 million units. And in foreign exchange trading for Monday, May 31, the U.S. dollar sold for an average $149.35. The Canadian dollar ended trading at $124.98. The pound sterling traded for $212.95. And the euro sold for an average $183.50. Oil prices rose on Tuesday with Brent hitting $71 and trading at its highest since March as expectations grew for increased fuel demand during the summer driving season in the United States, the world's top oil consumer. Prices were also boosted after data from China showed that factory activity grew at its fastest this year in May. Brent crude futures for August gained $1.60 to reach $70.92 a barrel. West Texas Intermediate crude for July was at $68.32 a barrel, up by $2 from Friday's close. Brent earlier hit a session peak of $71, the highest intraday price since March 8. And on that note, we close this edition of the Business Report Inside the News on PBCJ. I'm Gabrielle Thompson. Pleasant viewing. In regional news, we look to St. Lucia. The question is being asked, will forlorn LIAT employees in St. Lucia receive their full terminal benefits? The cash-strapped air carrier LIAT owes hefty payments, severance and vacation pay to staff. However, the National Workers' Union says securing these benefits remain an uphill battle. More in this report from HTS News Force. And the union has made it abundantly clear to the authorities that LIAT 1974 employees in St. Lucia request um, and demand 100% of their terminal benefits. So A liquidated LIAT now struggles to lift off with terminal payments owed to former employees. However, the loyal staff alongside their union in St. Lucia, the National Workers' Union, remains relentless in advocating for what is rightfully owed to them. Terminal benefits will include severance pay, um, vacation pay, um, and other emoluments that are owed to the employees. Um, as most persons would know, the company is currently in administration. There has been a court-appointed administrator in the person of Mr. Cleveland Seaforth. And the, the whole question of settling these redundancy payments and other terminal benefits is something that is very pressing for us. And we want to ensure that some resolution, um, not just at the regional level, but even the, 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 the local level, is arrived at. The push for 100% terminal benefits by the employees, according to General Secretary of the National Workers' Union, Yuan Haywood, comes after consultation with former LIAT employees, a regional consultative mechanism of trade unions, and the administrator for LIAT, Mr. Cleveland Seaforth. We're hoping we submitted some correspondence to the, the, the administrator up to last week. Um, and we're waiting to see what comes out of this particular administration process to ensure that the LIAT 1974 employees in St. Lucia get what they are legally entitled to. The financial plight of the air carrier has been well documented. However, the $29 million payout owed to its former employees remains the sticking point for the union in St. Lucia, despite other Caribbean islands taking alternative routes. There are discussions going on. I think the administrator indicated that he wanted the regional governments to get involved. Um, so we have to push and see what comes out of that particular process. Bearing in mind that the employees have a legal entitlement um, in terms of a claim for their, 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 their terminal benefits. They were made redundant based on our local legislation sometime in, 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 in late or mid-2020, and they have a legitimate and legal claim. So whatever discussions and, and, and 
resolutions that have been sought at the regional level through administration or what have you, um, it is important that we ensure that um, as best as possible these people get their, their, their terminal benefits. Prime Minister of Antigua and Barbuda, Gaston Brown, in January 2021, made a special plea to all regional governments to pay severance to their nationals who were employed by LIAT. The National Workers Union continues to monitor the situation that grounded the airline in 2020, landed its former employees in transit as they await their terminal benefits. Sola Jalfred. HTS News Force. British Airways resumed direct flights from the UK to the Bahamas on Monday after suspending the service in March 2020. The tourism minister called it a sign of the world slowly reopening. Here's more from our news. Nearly a full flight of over 200 passengers were on board British Airways' first direct flight from the UK to the Bahamas in over a year. Because a lot of Bahamians uh, were frustrated by the fact that they really couldn't get from Europe and nor could visitors get from Europe to the Bahamas. It comes as COVID-19 vaccines become more accessible worldwide after a tumultuous year. Luckily for us, uh, the countries uh, for which most of our foreign visitors originate, the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, they seem to have gotten uh, on top of this coronavirus and had a very successful vaccine rollout, especially the United States and the United Kingdom. And so there, as people become vaccinated, so too are they emboldened to travel. They want to travel. They want to go to warm weather destinations. They just want to go on vacation. The thing that, um, for most Bahamians is important is most Bahamians don't need visas to visit the UK. Um, you do need a visa if you're studying or working. And at the moment, we, we're not able to issue visas here. So you'd have to sort out your visas via gov.uk and by some other means. But most Bahamians for, for short stays don't need Despite having over 55,000 people already received their first dose of the vaccine, the Bahamas remains in a third wave of cases. British High Commissioner to the Bahamas Sarah Dickinson told our news that as the Bahamas, like many other countries, remains on the UK's amber list, COVID-19 testing is required prior to travel and once you arrive in the UK. You need a negative test, um, like most countries. Um, you need to fill in a passenger locator form, again, like most countries. And um, if you're staying in the UK rather than just transiting, you do have to self-isolate uh, for 10 days and take tests on day two and day eight. So it is very stringent. If you are vaccinated, they, are, they have exemptions for the testing, at least the, the post-arrival testing, but that PCR is required no matter what. British Airways manager Krishna Roll Johnson says for now, the flights will be once a week with 275 seats available. However, that could increase depending on COVID numbers and demand. But it's going to be a different dynamic because we are detagged from Grand Cayman, so it is our direct service, and we're excited to see how that is going to play out, particularly throughout the summer flying period. Now, again, those direct flights will only be weekly for now, but again, the tourism minister says it is at least a start. Reporting from LPIA for Our News, I'm Kyle Joaquin. The Barbados-based Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency, or CEDIMA, is urging regional countries to prepare for the hurricane season, which starts June 1. And the Barbados-based Caribbean Disaster Emergency Management Agency is urging regional countries to be fully prepared for the next six months, and in the case of St. Vincent and the Grenadines, the Lasso Fair volcano. While meteorologists have predicted that the season is expected to be an above-normal one, Sadima's Acting Executive Director Elizabeth Riley says Caribbean countries must still be prepared. I however want to reiterate that it only takes one event to make an impact, so hurricane preparedness is critical every year regardless of how much activity is forecast. And I invite you to visit the Sedema website at www.sedema.org for general guidance on hurricane preparedness. She noted that the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in thousands of people in the Caribbean being infected since last March and urged citizens to follow health protocols to keep the virus at bay. Carrefour reports that the risk of further cases occurring in the Caribbean remains high due to ongoing community spread and the presence of COVID-19 variants, which are of international concern in the region. Therefore, we fully understand that active surveillance, testing, 
and COVID-19 prevention and control measures, including physical distancing, hand hygiene, and wearing of masks should be maintained to interrupt viral transmission and reduce mortality associated with the virus. Individuals and communities must therefore continue to adhere to COVID-19 protocols in the face of hurricane threats, especially if public sheltering is required. In sports, the Jamaica Cycling Federation has become the most recent local sporting body to receive approval from the relevant authorities to stage training and competition events under the Disaster Risk Management Act 2015. The Federation received formal notice of the approval in a letter last week. The Wayne Palmer-led administration had submitted a request to return to sports with COVID-19 health and safety protocol to the relevant authorities from as early as November 2020. However, the process took quite some time for the protocol to be approved. The approval comes just four weeks ahead of the Pan American Track Cycling Championships scheduled for June 23 to June 29 in Lima, Peru. With the approval now secured, the National Track Cycling Squad has a short window of opportunity to get back to training and racing on the velodrome at the National Stadium in preparation for the championships. The Federation's track cycling program is headed by Olympic cyclists Ricardo Lynch, who was appointed as National Track Sprint Cycling Coach. And that's our package. As always, thanks for watching. You've just watched the news on PBCJ, the People's Station.